Mr. Stubbe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The savings of everyday Americans are now a vehicle for radical environmentalists to exercise their political goals in the private financial sector because they can't achieve their autocratic tendencies through the means of government power. And the Biden administration is supportive of these efforts, implementing rules to allow woke investors to control American savings and vetoing congressional action that tried to stop it. The law is clear. Tax advantage retirement plans in both state government and the private sector must be managed for the exclusive benefit of beneficiaries. This means that retirement plan managers may not pursue non-financial goals in their investments. But based on analysis done by the staff of this committee of 15 of the largest global ESG funds totaling over $120 billion in assets, ESG-labeled investments had a net loss over the past year, 18 percentage points worse than the S&P 500 and 25 percentage points worse than the NASDAQ. Investment managers cannot prioritize politically partisan views over performing their legal obligations to provide security to American seniors and saviors, savers. Even though Joe Biden vetoed congressional action, we must continue to advance legislation in this committee and in the House of Representatives to curb this extremism that undermines the institutions of government and the financial security of everyday Americans. Florida did it this past legislative session. Uh, I would like to add, with, I'd like to ask unanimous consent, Mr. Chairman, to add a deeper look at Florida's anti-ESG legislation to the record, a Forbes article. Without objection, so ordered. I'm just going to read one paragraph out of this. I encourage people to read it. It's a, it's a good uh, discussion about what Florida did, but this is just one paragraph. If I told you that the United Nations developed a plan to manipulate financial investments to force businesses to enact environmental and social policies that align with their goals, announced by Al Gore, you would probably start pushing me into the conspiracy theory category. Yet it happened. It didn't happen in secret. There are no leaked documents or conspirators. It happened in public, through public meetings with clearly stated goals and outcomes, and they held a press conference to announce it. We just didn't know what they were talking about. So I'd like to add that to the record, and uh, I'll start with um, Mr. Oakes. And thank you all for being here today. I, I thought your, your responses have been excellent. Uh, Mr. Oakes, in your testimony, you note that the goal of ESG is not better financial performance but rather to force compliance to a one-world view. Why are the proponents of ESG using these means to force their agenda on the American people? Well, I, I think it's pretty clear that these, uh, this agenda would not be accepted by the American people any other way. And so it's got to happen uh, in, the, in the private sector. And that's, I think, one of the reasons why this is so dangerous. We're, we're going around bodies like this to implement policy that affects all Americans. And, and this, is, this is dangerous to our, our constitutional form of government and our free market system. You also state that ESG policies po politicizes what should be purely financial decisions. Why is it so important that investment managers adhere to the exclusive benefit duty instead of these ESG considerations? Well, if you, if you think about um, information, we talk about, you know, investors wanting information. Information that's material to an investment decision is already uh, required disclosure. And so when we're pushing uh, companies to, to create reports or disclose uh, information, it costs money and resources on those companies. Um, spending resources on something that has no benefit is frankly irresponsible at best and certainly not in the shareholder's best interests. Many ESG proposals are not related um, to disclosing information, but rather uh, they want specific corporate action like uh, racial audits or net zero transition strategies. Uh, and oftentimes these disclosures give fodder to activists who then apply pressure to comply with the agenda and should, the, should this uh, disclosure show a company is not behaving according to that given agenda. So the information is often taken out of context to drive a narrative and shame a company to change its ways. Is a company giving to the right causes? Do they have a net zero plan so the targets can ratchet down as needed? Do they have racial equity? Racial equity audits often drive the composition of the workforce independent of merit or competency. All of this information is used to drive compliance. And you also cite data showing a statistically significant negative relationship between ESG investing and investor returns. How does this tangibly affect American families? Well, uh, clearly, this is not uh, about m making money for people. There's another agenda at work, and that's why this is so problematic for all people 
Uh, and in fact, if you look at, at uh, gasoline prices today, and the chronic underinvestment in oil and gas that is leading to higher gas prices, it's really the low income households that bear the burden of that because they spend three times more of their income on energy costs. And so this has a very detrimental effect on those who can least afford it. Agree with you 100%. Thank you for being here. I yield back.